This is Madden 20 rookie ratings. Did you, have you guys seen my block? From my perspective, I give myself a 9-3. But from your perspective, oh, this is all type of disrespect. I don't know, I'm a rookie, maybe uh, six pick. High 70s, low 80s. It's got to be like 80 overall. Yeah, I'd be interested to see how we get to 63. 63? He can throw. I'm better than him. Catching, change that. What pass did you see me drop? All right. 72? What was Hollywood? The highest overall receiver. Oh, he's just fast. All right, I'm changing my speed from 97 to 98. What? What was Kyler? 73? He's 73. I should have made a little more money, shouldn't I? My juke. What's the lowest you can actually be? Who has the highest strength? <laughs> what was his strength? 77. OK, I'll give myself 61. I don't know about that. I'm going to throw all type of videos up of me lifting up. Don't let my mom see this, dog. DK fast. I would bet DK can beat me in a race. If that makes sense. Oh, we were at the same time. <laughs> yeah, oh God. Hey, Madden did not do me wrong. They did me justice, baby. I had a one hand catch. I'm sure it went viral. I'm on Madden. This is crazy. Kyler Murray, and I'm not happy with my Madden rating. That's tough. No, I'm happy with it. It's cool. Yeah. Hey, everybody, it's the coach, and this is Madden 20 on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we've got what should be a good one between the New York Giants and the Cleveland Browns. So with that, let's get up to First Energy Stadium in Cleveland. For the call, we welcome in our broadcast team, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. And coach, we come at you from the shores of Lake Erie. EA Sports has the coverage of the NFL from First Energy Stadium here in Cleveland, Ohio. The folks here in Cleveland, even though all the down years, have never stopped supporting their hometown guys, and we got evidence of that a moment ago as the Browns made their entrance. They are ready to do battle with the New York Giants. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles kickoff moments away. Quickly, what are you watching in this one? The offensive line for both teams, because both teams have a terrific pass rush. They've got to keep their passers upright. If they have a chance to do that, they can both thrive on offense and move the ball downfield. This one fielded at the five. It's the coach. This is Madden 20 on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we've got what should be a good one between the New York Giants and the Cleveland Browns. So with that, let's get up to First Energy Stadium in Cleveland. For the call, we welcome in our broadcast team, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. We are just a stone's throw away from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as we get set for football at First Energy Stadium in Cleveland, Ohio. This was the scene a few minutes ago, the dog pound in full roar as their Browns emerge from their tunnel. They're ready to go as they get set to match up with the New York Giants. Alongside my partner, Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gunn, happy to be with you. And CD, as we get this thing going, give the folks at home something to keep their eye on. The running game for both teams, because I think this is going to be an old-fashioned, old-school type of a game. Physical, who wins up front, who runs the ball the best and controls the clock, they will come out the victor. Yeah. 
Rosas now to kick this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. So here come the Browns for their first drive on offense. Leading them out is the Austin, Texas native at quarterback. It's Baker Mayfield. Now a play fake here on first down. Throw left side, caught by the tight end, Njoku. An ideal beginning of the drive there as they'll get 20 at a first down. Nice play call, a little bit of play action right there. If you can get those linebackers to freeze for just a split second, that's usually all the room you need in order to get it to your tight end. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. Let's get it together, defense. Let's get it together. Mayfield now. He's got Njoku, his big tight end. Yeah, he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. A well-executed 22-yard gain. So the same tandem connecting on back-to-back -back throws to start the game. And maybe throwing the scouting report off just a little bit. That's not exactly what they think is going to be their number one receiver, but he's producing already early in this game. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Mayfield. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. He was looking for Landry that time, and that'll bring up second down. Let's meet the offense, Greg Robinson. Very, very talented. What a man to set your offensive line with. Greg Robinson can do it all. Tremendous athleticism, great strength, just coming into his own. First carry for Nick Chubb, and he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. This will be a two-yard loss on the play, and they'll be facing a third and 12. All right, quick observation, Brandon, because early on in this game, I'm seeing linebackers playing with their noses close to the line of scrimmage. And my guess is the wheels are turning on that other sideline. As a play caller, you're filing that away right now, aren't you? Yeah, you're trying to find that opportunity later on when you can play action them or stick something to them between the second and the third level. On third down, Mayfield. This is the tight end, the Joku. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. He wasn't the primary target, but I think it was almost like a, a check down situation, wasn't it? Yeah, hoping he can break some tackles, a big tight end, but he couldn't do it. Yeah, get it to that big frame and hope he can scatter some bodies, unable to get it done. Fourth down and on is Greg Joseph for the Browns field goal. From the left hash, this will be a 41-yarder. The kick by Joseph is good. And the Browns are out to a 3-0 lead. So the opening drive does yield points, maybe not the seven they wanted, but they'll take the three. Accumulating first downs does not go up on the scoreboard but it does go into the DNA of a team that's trying to establish itself to start a game. That has to feel pretty good for them. They'll take the three. Yeah, they had three first downs and three points. Joseph now to kick this one away. This fielded at the two. Then he'll take this across the 25, couple extra yards up to the 27 yard line. So here are the Giants ready to start their initial drive of the game. 
They'll be led out by the veteran quarterback, a multiple-time Pro Bowler. It's, of course, Eli Manning. I still remember a scouting report that a former Giants GM had on Eli Manning coming out of Mississippi. He simply said he has it. And we always talk about the it factor, which means they're going to play large in big moments, in key situations, and Eli Manning has always had that. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play call to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they will pay dividends as the game progresses. Nice play right there to stop him behind the line, but I want to see how this defense continues to play him here in the first half. Yeah, we know. You know better than I. He has the ability to take over a game, so what do you do? Yeah, I think you have to make sure that you bottle him in at varying levels because if you crowd everyone to the line of scrimmage, if he breaks through, it's nothing but room to run. And for the Browns, a nickel set here on third down. Here's Manning to throw. They'll set up the screen to Barkley. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. That'll back him up two yards and also bring up fourth. Well, you can see what they wanted to do. They wanted to set up the screen there, but it got blown up. It's hard to run that play if you're not getting a lot of pressure at the quarterback because the space doesn't open up. They were able to read that one and slow it down and stop it before they could get a first down. Fourth down, so on is the punter, Riley Dixon. Back deep for the Browns, Antonio Callaway. This is brought in at the 21, and he'll be out right at the 35. Nice job bringing that one back, 14 on the return. And the Browns will take over, first and 10. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. They've got a 3-0 lead and the football as they start first and 10. For the Browns, good starting field position as they have it first and 10. First down, Mayfield. Pass incomplete. The intended receiver was set the valve, but it's going to be second down. And the defense for New York. In a league where the vast majority of guys play hard on every snap, Marcus Golden stands out for me because I've seen this guy play with so much passion and came out of college as a defensive end. They talked about making him an outside linebacker, but they figured out his strength putting his hand on the ground, rushing the passer with a lot of force and a lot of will. The second down play, not much better than the first, just a gain of one there. And this is why aggressive defense coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D lineman to make the play. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. Nice play there to force the incompletion, and to me, one thing's for sure. When you're the underdogs and you're playing on the road, you absolutely have to get takeaways. You've got to get the ball from them. Yeah, win that turnover battle, going to be key. They didn't get one there, but you get the feeling they keep making plays like that. They might just get a few. Yeah, once you get one, defensive teams think they come in bunches. So on fourth down, Britton Colquitt on the punt. Jabril Peppers is deep for the Giants. And New York set to take the field. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically, what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Manning going to hand it off to Barkley. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. That's a big loss of three, and it brings up third down. 
Plays like we just saw there, that's why they're up right now. And the defense, they're doing their job. Yeah, it starts with the guys up front. So when you talk with GMs who are putting together a team, a lot of them say, we're going to build from the inside out because if you control the line of scrimmage, you control the rest of the ball game. And that's what we're seeing here. They're actually playing in the offense's backfield, not necessarily just playing at the line of scrimmage. On third and long, it's Manning. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 15. It's a gain of five on the play, and that's going to make it fourth down. Well, the good thing about covering any game I do with you is I know that there's no problem with rhythm. Now, what we're watching offensively, a little bit of a problem there. Yeah, punt on the first drive, looking at another one here. Just a little slow, and, you know, they, they were talking about a fast start, but that hasn't been the case. Yeah, and let's face it, any team we cover always talks about a That's fast true. start. That's true. But it's not necessarily going to happen just because they say so. And whether it's the script, whether it's, you know, just what they're going through, whether they're seeing different defenses, they'll have to figure it out as this game moves on. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards. Well struck. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Heading out as the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. A throw left side to start out. That's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. Now this will probably be the last play of the quarter. Three nothing after one on EA Sports. On to the second from Cleveland. It's the Browns in control of the football as they've got it with a first and ten. On first down, they'll run with Chubb. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. They go with Chubb on second down. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. It's a first down on a gain of 10. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. And if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Now a fake on the give here as they try to run pass option. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. On second and a yard, Mayfield looking left side. That's caught by Landry. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. First red zone opportunity for the Browns thus far. They have a first and 10 at the 18. Mayfield hands it off to Chubb. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Alec Ogletree in on the stop. Perfectly designed blitz right there. They took that one from the grease board to the field because they were able to free up their linebacker to get into the backfield and spill the play. And he gets it down close to the 10-yard line. And he's able to get most of what he needed on the carry there. Seven yards on the gain, and it's third and two now. Now Mayfield. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. Beckham in 11-yard touchdown. And the Browns add six to their lead. 
Man, he just ran a terrific route. Extremely hard to defend when it's run that precisely and the ball's delivered that accurately. Greg Joseph on for the extra point. Extra point safely through, and the lead grows to 10 0. So this drive spans seven plays, and it ends with a touchdown for Cleveland. Joseph now to kick this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. Here's the giant offense now as they get ready to take over here. They've had it twice. They punted twice. Not the start they were hoping for. Not at all. And let's face it, every facility we visit. Pressure from his right, and he goes down hard, flat on his back. The number one pick, Miles Garrett, coming in to drop him. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. Quarterback was hit. the sack they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. A handoff to Barkley and they won't fare much better here as he maybe gets back to the line. No gain on the play as we have reached the two-minute warning. We've hit the two-minute mark of the first half. 10-0 our score. Ready, break. Fans, a reminder, I have a note card here that says ad-lib halftime preview. So I guess let's do just that as we'll hand things over to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando when this one reaches halftime. Did I do okay? You did great. Not a bad job. Hey. But, you know, writing down your ad -libs. If you print it, I'm going to read it. I'm Brandon Gaughan. Here's Riley Dixon now, as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Returnable here for Callaway. So possession goes over here on the punt, and that will come the offense as they take over. First down throw for Mayfield. That's to the right side and complete to Njoku. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight. Second and two. A good pickup there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Seeing that play and understand just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make
Make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? <laughs> what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. And he can't get away from the pressure the Giants get there. Marcus Golden, too much to handle that time, gets the sack. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. The Browns on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and eight. Working out of the gun, Mayfield. He's got his man, that's Landry. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts as the clock shows 50 seconds to play here in half number one. First and ten, Mayfield. That is caught by the former Gator, Antonio Callaway. A good pick up there, 26 yards. Mayfield now looking to throw on first down. Looking for the end zone. Oh, he had six points in his hands there. Couldn't hang on. Second down. They're going for a receiver there. Already has one touchdown in his first half. A second one not to be. I like where their head space is, though. I mean, I really like the thought process, right? You got a guy who's already scored one, right? You want to go back to him, continue the hot hand, and make them adjust to you defensively. I like what they were trying to get done, even though they weren't successful. They've looked his way quite a bit, and in my estimation, as well they should. Well, that's now five catches in this first half alone. And he picks up another first down. He's been an important part of their offense here early. Chubb. And they will stop him after a fairly minimal pickup. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. They come out here in the eye. They'll give it to Chubb, and he's in. Touchdown, Browns. Nick Chubb in the final seconds of the first half, and the Browns add on to their lead. That's one of the better examples of clock management I've seen. Whittled it all the way down just about and still put the ball in the end zone. Yeah, just a methodical drive and something really to take into the lockers here. Joseph now to have the PAT. Point after, up and good. And that makes our score 17-0. So that drive in total, eight plays. And Nick Chubb the one to finish it off as he does so with a touchdown run.
Joseph now to kick this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. Final play of the first half, barring a penalty as they come up on first and 10. So we have reached halftime here in Cleveland with the Browns on top. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach! Okay, right, Brandon. Thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to this slimmed-down version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. This one is maybe not exactly in the bag yet, but there is definitely a big mountain to climb in this third quarter. The teams are already back out there, so let's not waste any time as we'll turn it back over to Brandon Godden. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This is fielded at the goal line. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. And New York set to take the field. And that first half, one to forget really on both sides of the ball. They got to find some way to string something together here, don't they? Yeah, they're down big right now. So as you mentioned, trying to find something to string together, get some consistency, something sustained, maybe calm their whole team down and find a way to get back in this one. Yeah, because right now you're down big, you're being shut out. Let's see if this is the drive that kind of kickstarts them. From the 24, they'll go again on second and 10. To throw again. Manning. Throw left side, complete to Ingram. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. And partner, I think that's a great example that not all tight ends are created equal. Because everything was right. Got the completion. But he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 10 yards, good for a giant first down. I feel like Eli Manning has just gone from downfield bomber to a guy who can complete everything. He can hit him underneath now, yeah, can't he? Yeah, we just saw that there with that pass completion. The maturity of a veteran taking what the defense will give him. Of scrimmage the 37 on first and 10. They'll try to right side here. Barkley. And it's been like this all night long. Nowhere to run as they stop him behind the line. Hate to say it, but that play typifies what we've seen from this offense all game long. Yeah, don't you think maybe you flip over your play sheet as the offensive coordinator and see the side that says try something different? <laughs> you know, because this has not worked all game long. They continue to try and get it done. They've got to come up with something a little bit different. Try something yeah. special, something they haven't seen. Anything to score a point. Hey, come on out here. Come get some. Come get some. Come on, dude. Again, it's Barkley. To the 40 and no further. The razzle-dazzle, though, got him a couple extra on the play. But you've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third manageable with that run. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. They'll give him a yard on the play, and that'll bring up fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. Here's Riley Dixon now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. Yeah. 
And he didn't quite have the back spin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. Mayfield going to lead the Browns up now, first and 10 at their own 20 yard line. Here's Nick Chubb as they try to fire up this run game. And he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two. And it brings up second down. Tough first half for him, unable to put up the numbers he's used to producing. But with a guy like him, you and I both know it just takes a couple of explosive touches for him to make an impact on this game and on the stat sheet as well. From the 22, here's second and eight. Throwing Mayfield. Got an open man. That's David Njoku, the tight end. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? The Browns on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This will be third and six. From the gun, Mayfield. He finds Beckham complete. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. Got what they needed there. The drive continues with a nine-yard pickup. I don't care how many times we say it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass trick in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. To throw, Mayfield. Caught left side, it's Beckham. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. A good pick up there, 22. So the drive takes him into Giants territory now. First and 10 at the 45-yard line. Chubb on the counter. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice, because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. They run again on first down, Chubb. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. All right, that one fell incomplete there, but the best quarterbacks, They'll miss on 40% of their throws somewhere in that neighborhood, similar to a great hitter in baseball, who's going to fail seven out of 10 times and still have a great year. In this case, you want perfection, but way better that it hits the ground instead of going to an opposite color jersey. And he's brought down, but not before he reaches the eight yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And we're back now here in Cleveland. It's the Browns football, and they've got the lead here as we start quarter number four. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And yeah, this play doesn't go anywhere. Backwards, losing yardage to the 11. That'll set them back with a loss of three on the play. And that'll bring up a second and goal. Brent, that's clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down.
So they get pushed back to the 11, and here's second and goal. They'll try again with Chubb, and the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. That backs him up one yard and brings up third down. Count me as a little bit surprised by what we just saw there because this has been a pretty long drive, and normally you think that wears down a defense. In this case, it looked like the offensive line let him down a little bit. Yeah, allowed the penetration and the ability to stuff him for a loss. They've been stuffed twice here for losses. Now it's third and goal. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. First quarter, Charles, you really emphasized the importance of winning the turnover battle as a visiting team, as an underdog. They haven't forced a single turnover in this game. And right now they're losing, so no turnovers might lead to no victory. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. The kick by Joseph is good. And the lead now increases to 20 to nothing. So it's three more points, and that widens this thing out even further here in the fourth. And you know in this league, you can never have enough points, but this widens it out, as you said, and now it's all about ball control, isn't it? Joseph now to kick this one away. This fielded at the two. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Let's go. The Giants offense now gets ready to head back onto the field. And let's face it, this drive is not going to have any bearing on this game, but it's kind of important for one reason, isn't it? It certainly is. you got to get points. And okay, all right, I'm being facetious here. But you get points, you feel a little bit better about yourself as you move on to the next one. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is emboldened the secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. On second and 10, Manning, and that's gonna be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one, it's second down. Well, it just seems like all game long, there hasn't been a lot of sync quarterback to wide receiver on this side of the football. They haven't been on the same page quarterback and receivers. Heck, they've been on the same grease board when you draw plays up. They haven't been on the same surface tablet that you look at on the sidelines. Nothing's worked for them. They've got to find a way to start matching each other's movements. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They've become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Manning now, perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven, it's first and 10. Again, it's Manning. Caught right side, Tate. He had a great move, but he'll still be stopped shy of midfield. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Hard to believe his first catch of the game defensively. They bottled him up. That's why they're well on their way to victory. Put your best cover guy on him and then change the coverages behind him throughout the game. Brackets, double, zone, man, you name it. Make sure he gets a lot of angles. No gain that time on the completion, and it'll be third down. Now the old pass completion for no gain, not something you want to call up out of the playbook too often. Yeah, most offensive coordinators don't have that on their play sheet, so they've got to go back and scramble after this one. But right now, with what they're telling receivers about making sure you take care of the ball in open field, sometimes the fighting for extra yardage doesn't come as a result. That and good tackling can lead to no yards gained. Get ready, get ready. He gets seven out of it, and he also gets a first. 
Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 44-yard line. Manning. He gets it complete to Latimer. And to the 36-yard line, taken down there after getting eight yards. A good pick up there, eight yards on the first down completion. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Looking for Tate, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Joe Schobert. And his guys will take over at the 25-yard line. So the Browns in possession of the football here as we get you reset. And no doubt what they're looking to do is just salt away the final couple of minutes and escape with a win. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. It's a loss of a yard there and now second down. Another scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Take four, take four. They stay on the ground. This time it's Johnson. Eight yards there on the carry, and now they're left with a much more manageable third and three. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive game. Just keep that clock ticking. They'll run for it. Here's Chubb, and he won't get close. Only a yard, fourth and three. That didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just started in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. Here's Britton Colquitt now as he'll kick it away for the second time. So Cleveland able to come away with the victory here. And this was truly a total team effort, Charles, on both sides of the ball. So they absolutely pitched a shutout, so it can't get much better than that, right? The defense led the way, but the offense did their part as well. They moved the ball up and down the field. So you've got to like what you saw. What do they call that? A total team effort? I think when it's time to hand out game balls, guys from both sides will end up getting one. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gauden. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. It's a win for the Browns, and they're happy in the dog pound as we say so long from Cleveland.